Hello friends, this is John from John Hutton Golf Channel um, and today I managed to get some of these what I think are the cheapest balls you can possibly get on the market I mean I looked through the internet, I've looked through everywhere uh, to find the cheapest balls possible and I found these um, Encisus Distance Balls Distance 100 Balls uh, 12 of them um, so there's the packet Switch over to my face <laughs> Hello there It's a little bit black because it's on the night But um, I'm actually very interested in these balls um, These are the cheapest golf balls that I've possibly seen On the internet uh, Proper shops Physical shops and everything and sizes. I didn't even know these existed to be honest um, But yeah um, I finally managed to get these in Argos I got them in Billingham um, I ordered them online and picked them up at Billingham um, not the one at Hartlepool before but they had none in stock but yeah I picked these up um, in sizes 100 balls uh, £6 a ball uh, sorry a ball £6 for, for the dozen that is unbelievable I I was going to say to you there, I was going to say, how much do you think I paid for these? £20? 15 quid a dozen? I mean, I, I've, I've never seen any balls now, apart from the really cheap cheap balls, 9 99 a dozen. But £6. £6 for 12 golf balls, that's unbelievable. Um, so let's have a look at them, let's have a look at them. Open it up. I mean, the packet, the packet just says, distance. Distance golf balls. It tells you nothing else. Got all this other writing in like Swedish and all this kind of stuff. But it just says uh, dis distance balls. And on the back, I mean, it's not conning you. Yeah? I'll, I'll switch the camera. It's not conning you. Yeah? It's just saying distance. Distance balls. That's all they are. So, yeah, it's, it's interesting. I'm going to open them up now. Let's see how do I get into them. It, open them up. I'm very, very interested actually. Um, let's have a look at these balls. Actually, on first look, they don't look too bad. They're not individually wrapped, but <laughs> what, what, am I, what am I expecting for 50 pence a golf ball? 50, 50 pence a golf ball. But yeah, uh, that's it. That's all it's got on it. Incise this. Um, whatever number it is, five with the line, um, which I suppose you could use for an alignment thing. But um, on first inspection, it doesn't look too bad. The coating feels a little bit hard on it, but apart from that, it doesn't look too bad. So, yeah, hopefully, I can get on the course tomorrow, try them out, and um, see what they're like. I mean, that's all it's got on it. Inside, it's just one and nothing else. Um, yeah, yeah, let's give them a go and. Uh, See what happens. I mean, for six quid a golf ball, I'm not expecting anything. I mean, for all I know, I could just hit it off the club face and it could go 50 yards. I just don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's just a kiddies ball. I don't know. But for, <laughs> for six quid a dozen, what am I expecting? Yeah, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. So we'll give them a go tomorrow on the course and, um, and see what happens. Yeah. Righty, girlfriend. So here we go then. Here we go. I'm on back on Winyard again just to test out these six pound a dozen balls. We shall see how they go. Incisus 100. Unitis, Incisus, whatever you want to call them. From uh, What the hell are those days, man? There we go. Yeah, uh, six, six quid a dozen from Argos. I don't think you can get any balls cheaper than that. I really don't. But we'll, we'll see. If anybody can come up with any more balls, brand new out the packet, that's cheaper than six pound a ball then uh, please tell me, please tell me, because I'm very interested to know how cheap these golf balls go and how well they perform, but at uh, 50 pence a ball, brand new out the packet, 
I can't think of any and I'm not really expecting much out of these balls but we'll see we'll see how we go here's the first one this is the second that we're in the yard um, the long par four we're going to test out the ball for just a few holes and see how we do here we go then in Cyprus 100 six pound a ball sorry if it's not very professional golf friends I've just rushed out again no mic and stuff but uh, we'll give it a go we'll give it a go That's a beauty. Slight draw straight down the middle. And you know what? It didn't sound half bad. A little bit hard. I mean, obviously it's a distance ball. A little bit hard, but nothing that made me think, oh, bloody hell, this is a crap golf ball. It actually felt all right. So off we go then. I don't know what time it is, by the way. Um, scroll down. Let's have a look. It is, oh, it's 8 o'clock, so I've got an hour to get a video in. Maybe less, maybe 50 minutes. We'll do a few holes and um, we'll see if these balls are really as bad as the price makes them out. I'll tell you what, golf friends, what's wrong with that? There's an opening shot. What is wrong with that? Off the hybrid, it sounded absolutely fine. A little bit, maybe a little bit hard. But my initial reaction was... Sounded all right, not too bad, not too bad off, off the old hybrid. Two hundred and thirty-four yards to the pin. Let me make sure. No, I've got that wrong. I said two hundred and four. Hold on. Jesus, 200 yards. I mean, you see, this is what I mean with the rangefinder. I'm not sure it's 100% accurate unless it's absolutely spot on the flag. But once it is, it's pretty accurate. Anyway, 200. Slightly up the hill. Wind yard, I know this well. It's going to have to be my hybrid. But yeah, off the actual hybrid, not too bad initially. Maybe slightly hard, like you say, but what's wrong with that? Straight down the middle of the fairway, most of the balls. Maybe I lost a tiny bit distance, maybe I lost three or four yards, maybe maybe I could have made it to that marker or something with my Volvic or something, but for, for six quid, what am I expecting? What am I expecting for a six quid ball? I'm flying off to the right. I will find the ball. I will find the ball. That's not the ball's fault, by the way. I hit it really well. It's just me warming up and everything. I've hit it really well. It's just gone flying off to the right where that big tree is on the right that you can probably see. The dark green tree, just slightly right of that big dark tree. So I will find it, I think. It's just, um, it just went right, that's all. But, uh, that sounded okay off the club as well. It didn't sound horrible or anything. It sounded pretty impressive, actually, um, for a six quid golf ball. Been quite lucky, actually. Been quite lucky. Right. Hopefully, you can see the flag stick there. <sighs> okay. So it's going to be a little sixty degree onto the, the green. Let's be sixty. Okay, now this is going to be interesting, the spin control. Has it got the spin control of, say, a Shrixen soft feel or a, a Volvic Vivid or Callaway soft, soft, super soft? I'll tell you what, I'll move the club for you so I can get it on camera. Um, this will be interesting. This will be quite interesting, actually. Because um, this is when it matters, the green side control. Move back a little bit so you can see the ball. Hopefully, I hope the ball's on. So here we go then. And this is important to me because normally this is where I feed my strokes for short game, for short game sometimes gets us out the muck. I 
and we're not going to see that so we'll see it in real time i think i've hit that pretty well i think that's going to be pretty if that was a friction or something maybe just past the flag maybe just past it but not miles past it but we'll see with this ball the feeling i've got with that is i've hit that well and it should be near the flag stick but we'll see how much bite oh well, I did say, I did say, I thought I hit it well. That's not too bad. Hey, I tell you what, that isn't half bad. Um, get me putter. Where's the putter? That isn't too half bad, actually. But the putting, now then, this smell it might come onto its own. There's got to be a catch with these boards. It's got to let me down somewhere for six pound a golf ball. It cannot, it cannot be that good, surely. It cannot be perfect, can it? Well, not perfect, but good enough for the price, I mean 50 pence a ball, come on. Yeah, fine. This is control. It didn't. I didn't find it too hard off the put ahead. I found it reasonable. I didn't. I didn't feel like it was terribly hard. I mean, there's a few scratches and marks on it and stuff. Um. So maybe that if that's its downfall. Maybe the cover just isn't very durable. Maybe these balls lost two or three holes, and then you've got to chuck them away. Because straight away, I don't know if you can see, but straight away it's already getting little scruffs on the ball. So maybe, after a few holes, that's its fault, it just scruffs up. But we'll see, after that first hole, I mean, I've I've got a five, which I normally take on this, on this long par four. I've had two decent hybrids, a decent chip shot and two putters. What's wrong with that? Nothing wrong at all. Anyway, we'll see what we're like with the irons on the par three. Okay, we're up onto the, uh, the par three. Have a look this time. We're in 38.6, it's coming out at. So it's not as long as it normally is. Strong pitching wedge or a nine. Where's the wind going? That's the main thing. Where's the wind? Going over to the right, so it's up my face. I might just go for a, a full pitching wedge here. A full pitching wedge, yep. What I'm going to go for. I'm going to use the same ball. Well, let's see what it's like off my low irons. I mean, ideally, I would have liked to have tested it with an eight iron or something like that. Um, Actually, we'll put these in here because they're just getting in the way of the key. There we go. Ideally, I would like to try an eight iron or something, but the tees are right up at the front today. Oh, it's part three. But still, it shouldn't really matter. It should still feel the same off the club face. So here we go then. Let's see what it's like on the club part three. I've just hit it right again. Seems to be hybrid. Um, it's just a horrible fault I've got at the minute. But it sounded all right. That did sound a little bit hard, mine off the face. I must be honest, it did sound hard. But it didn't affect the flight or anything, really. I don't really see it affect the flight. Um, 
So yeah, it might be in the bunker on the right, but in terms of distance and stuff, I think it's all right. But we'll see when we get down there, and uh, we'll see what it's like if I'm in the bunker. It might be interesting to see how I'll play it out the sand. Yeah, I've been very lucky there. So it's a little pitch, pitch on, and put. So you mightn't get out. That's it. Uh, we'll want from there. I think me 56 will do the trick. So you might be able to hear us, but you'll probably see us. Then I'll come back and I'll explain what's happened. Wow, that was very, very lucky. Again, a little bit hard, but nothing terrible, nothing that's going to give you nightmares. Yeah, four, nearly a par. I'll take that, I'll take that with a six pound, uh, 50 pence ball. Um, the only fault I'm picking up from it so far is it sounds a little bit hard off the club face. Um, apart from that, apart from off your, your irons, your proper irons, I don't see a massive fault with this ball. Nothing that's got a certainly... Uh, upset an average 20 30 handicapper uh, i don't even know with the cavity backs if they would notice a difference with this ball but um that's that's the only thing so far is um it's just a tiny bit hard off the club head that's all right because of the time and everything normally on this hole i wouldn't do this pull the driver out but i am because i want to see how it reacts off the club face with the driver um Everything's all right so far, apart from it feels a little bit hard. Um, which obviously, if you're a sort of 11 handicapper like me and upwards, you, you don't really like a hard feeling ball. But if you're brand new to the game or if you've got kids who are wanting to get in the game and they're not brand aware, and certainly so far a ball, I would say, yeah, like the music, it's not too bad. Now the big boy's coming out. Let's see how it reacts off the club face with the driver. What? I, I really don't like this click in this driver. It's all of a sudden appeared and I did see I would get my tool out and sort it out. But I just don't know where my tool is. It's somewhere in my bag. Have to do it later. I just, I just don't like the click. It might be the screws a little bit loose, or it might just be the rust. I just don't know. Here we go then, the driver. that bunk on the right that's a hell of a shot but I do know that there is rough down there but I tell you what it went like a bullet off the club face it went straight as well no deviation no deviation in the flight no draw no fade no nothing it's a belter just hit it right where that uh, bunker is but yeah we'll see when we get down there it was a hell of a shot I just hope I can find the ball I just hope I haven't hit it too well and it's in that rough stuff over the uh, over the bunker so well, here it is. I think the bunker is, I think it's actually, might have actually hit the bank of this bunker and it slowed it right up because um, it was actually half a decent good shot. 
Anyway, let's see what we've got from here. Forty-two point nine. Yeah. So I think the banks took took about thirty yards off it, but never mind. Hmm. <whistles> Slightly downhill. We'll try a pitching wedge. One hundred forty-two. It's a long way, but uh, I think going for the nine iron will be asking too much. So we'll have to go nuclear pitching wedge. So we'll see what happens here then. Oh, there it is, up in the bank on the left. I saw it hit the green, the left side of the green, and go up on the bank on the left. It's a good shot, just a little bit left. And that actually felt all right. Again, a little bit hard, but nothing that's going to give you nightmares. I mean, I don't personally like the hard feel of the ball when it goes dung, but that's chunkiness. But uh, nothing wrong with the performance of the flight or anything. It seems to be the distance control and everything seems to be fine. It seems to be a, a decent ball that way. Well, seriously, golf friends, look at that. The distance control. You can't say any better than that, can you? I thought it was on the left bank up here, but it's not. It's on the green. See how good my eyesight is again. But um, what does that tell you? What does that tell you about the ball? There's nothing wrong with it. If if you're not bothered about the uh, the soft feel of the ball, everything else, there's nothing wrong with it. There you go. <laughs> there you go. A, six, uh, a 50 pence golf ball on a 360 yard hole and um, yeah I part it I part it with a 50 pence ball so what does that prove what does that prove it's proved something to me certainly um, I can't get away from the fact I don't like the feel of the ball but in terms of the flight in terms of the distance control in terms of the putting off the club face I don't see anything wrong with it so far. I think I'll do a couple more holes and I'll go in. But for a beginner golfer, yeah, uh, what's wrong with it? Apart from we get scuffed up and you might have to use two or three balls in the round, but if, if you don't like the appearance wise of it, but apart from that, it's okay. It's okay. It's, it's a decent golf ball. So we'll move on to the next hole and, and see how we do here. So, yeah, I know this hole very well. It's obviously a hybrid. Get it down in the middle of the fairway. Then it's a tight shot, so this will be interesting again. In terms of the hybrid so far, I think it's been okay. I think it's been all right. Um, the short irons and everything, a little bit hard. Chipping's been all right. I'd still like to try one out the bunker, to be honest. But, well, uh, we'll see. Maybe I'll do this hole and maybe the next hole and then finish there because it's starting to get dark now. But the camera doesn't do justice how dark it's getting now in the U. If you're in the UK now, uh, it's getting dark at about 10 to 9 now. So, yeah, I, mean, I don't know what time it is now. It is, yeah, so in 20 minutes time it's going to be pitch black. Not well, pitch black, but almost near, it'll be sunset. It's going to be down. We've got 20 minutes to do two holes. And I'll finish there.
Yeah. Here we go. Nice and straight again. Slight fade, slight fade off the club head, but I hit it well. It sounded a little bit hard again, which I've said throughout the video, it's because it's a distance ball and it's 50 pence a goal. But in terms of performance, it's not like it's ballooning or it's it's losing distance or anything like that. It's gone straight down the middle. Maybe it might, it might have drifted off in that bunker on the left, which I haven't seen. But we'll see where we get up there. But it certainly isn't uh, failing on the distance department or uh, or where it actually goes. Right, well, I think I lost a, I lost a little bit of distance what I normally get with this, actually. Point six. But I'm only talking five or six yards. We normally get it up to where where those trees are normally. So maybe I've lost about five yards, but it's not a disaster losing five yards. Uh, 109 yards. Dee, 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 dee. Hmm. See, this is when it comes into its own, its distance control. This is why I specifically wanted to do this hole, because now I've got to get it over this bunker and stop it on a penny. So this is going to be interesting. 109 yards, maybe 5% pitch and wedge. I could go for the 52, but I don't think the 52 is going to carry that far. I really don't, I really don't. I think you, that'll reach 100 and you'll end up in the bunker. So I've got to go for this. I think I might have gone to the back. I think this is where it's going to let itself down the the, the, the green side control. We'll see where we get there, but um, it didn't. It, I heard the thump. It's whether or not it's held onto the green or not. I saw it hit the green, but after that, I, I can't see. It might be at the back of it is. That's where it might just let itself down the green side control. Well, hit me with a stick of rhubarb. It's uh, it's in the bunker. Believe it or not, honestly, I, I must have sort of hit off this uh, some bit of the bunker here because I thought it was the green. Well, never mind, never mind. At least we can see we'll drag out the, uh, the sand now. Sand, I actually know. Nothing wrong with the ball, that's me. I'll take it again. This time a bit harder. Let's try and hit it a little bit harder. I mean, that actually felt pretty, pretty good. It's just I didn't simulate it a bit. I just didn't hit it that well. I just didn't give it enough. Which I started to do with my bunker shots actually. I'm normally a decent bunker shot player, but you can see it's gone a little bit with these bunker shots. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Absolutely spot on perfect. So yeah. They actually tell you to brush it the other way now, don't they? But yeah, um, I'll take my ball back to where it was originally, roughly, uh, because that was cheating a little bit. But I just wanted to prove to you that uh, even out the bunker, it's not too bad. I will take the um, take the trolley round. Um, yeah, I, I, I just wanted to prove to you that um, even out the bunker, it's, it's, it's not a bad ball. The flight is actually, when I hit it out the bunker there, a little bit lower than I expected. Uh, a little bit lower ball flight than what I would expect out of a soft feel or a, a Volvic Vivid or a, soft, or, uh, a Super Soft Callaway or a Titleist Velocity or whatever, whatever it is I've been using. The flight's a little bit lower, but again, what the hell are we expecting for 60 pence? So I'll pick this one up. 
I put it back roughly to where I was, which was up on this bank here. Where was I? Somewhere here, roughly, I think. Was it there? No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It was something like that. So I'll do a little pitch. I'll turn the camera back so we can see where it is in relation to the, uh, the green and everything. But yeah, not bad. Not a bad little ball. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Here we are. Just put it there. Here we go. There we go. If I had a good bunker shot, it would probably be in a par. If or even a bit. If um, I hit a. But I went, I went for my second shot, it was a five. So there we go. So either way, actually I won't you down to the next tee, the last one. So either way, golf friends, uh, got a five again, one over, which is my sort of golf. It's not, it's not particularly letting us down. It's not a fancy ball. It's only got the one thing. There we go, it slices a hundred. That's all it's got on it with a little line there. Uh, nothing fancy yet, nothing else on the ball. Um, 50 pence brand new out the packets. This is the last hole I'm doing, by the way, that I'm going in. Because it's nearly black. Uh, 50 pence. You, you, you just can't moan. You really can't moan for the price. Um, here's a tea box down here. So this is a long par four. We'll do this one and I'll head in. Again, we're going to use the driver off the tea to see how it reacts. But uh, I don't see anything wrong with it at all so far, apart from sounds a little bit hard off the club face um, I mean, even with that hole and also when you're in the bunker uh, the flight's a little bit sort of when you get out of the bunker normally it goes like that like this this ball goes a little bit lower a little bit flatter but apart from that there's nothing else really out and safe so for 50 pence a ball it's bloody good value and uh, it certainly hasn't got me saying the ball's disgusting and I'm an 11 handicapper uh, and I was expecting all sorts to happen with this ball, I really was um, I thought, oh, it's just gonna, it's gonna go all over the place, it hasn't I thought, it's gonna feel horrible off the club, it's gonna break the club it hasn't, it hasn't been too bad, it hasn't been too bad at all here we go, last hole Jesus, I can't even see the fairway now, the top of the fairway or the bunkers. That's how dark it is. Here we go then. I hit it well. I hit that very, very well. I just hope I've got it over that bunker. If I've got it over that bunker, that's a scorcher. Again, off the drive. I've noticed a slightly lower ball flight that I get with it. Now I don't know if that's got something to do with the ball, if it's cheap, if it's the cotton, if, 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 if it's not a very durable cotton, if there's something to do with the dimples on the ball, or if it's just a cheap ball, I don't know. But the flight's a little bit lower, especially off the irons and the driver I've noticed. My hybrid, not so much. But yeah, definitely off the driver and uh, the lower irons, it's, it's, it's a lower, it's a slightly lower ball flight than normal. Oh my goodness, look at that, golf friends. Look at that drive. I, I don't think I've drove the ball that far before in my life. I really don't. I mean, what distance is it? Ninety-nine point two. That that is level with the Volvic uh, Vivid for distance. 99.2, I mean, that is absolutely unbelievable. I said blackcurrant stuff, that Robin's blackcurrant and uh, blackcurrant and blackberry. That's unbelievable. 
99.2 yards left. That means I've drove that ball from that tee about 275 yards, which is up there with the Volvic. The Volvic, I hit 275, 280, when I really, really hammer it. I knew a cream cracker that one, and I knew it was flying like a bullet. And I said to myself, that's going to be a good drive, that. And uh, yeah, it's absolutely surpassed itself. Me and my average drives are normally up there where the bunker is, but that's really surpassed itself there. So don't kid yourself as to the, the, the ball. In terms of distance, it goes, it goes. Don't worry about it. The only thing is you've got to accept it's going to have a slightly lower ball flight and it's going to sound slightly harder off the club face. But apart from that, for 50 pence a ball, I, I can't pick any faults with it. be in the bunker uh, too much local knowledge there unfortunately I says I want to hit it left so it comes back around to the right but um, we'll see when we get down there in fact let's just walk it in let's just walk it. it's only a hundred yards um, but even then slightly a bit dull off the club face but nothing that's gonna make me lose sleep I hit it well it sounded okay a little bit dull off the club face but maybe that's just the coating maybe it's just the coating I can't um, I can't really complain about the ball. I can't say, whoa, it's, 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 it's doing all sorts, it's flying all sorts in the air, it's going low, it's going high, it sounds like a bloody, it sounds like a bowling ball off the club, it's, it's, it's you know, it's, it's vibrating not off the club, I can't say any of that. For 50 pence a ball, oh, there it is. So yeah, not as bad as I thought. But I tell you what, for 50 pence a ball, I don't see anything wrong with this. I tell you what, man, playing Winyard, when you know the course, when you've got the local knowledge, my God, how much easier it is to play it. And it's not, it's not a hilly course either, so you don't tire as easy. My God, what a difference when you've got local knowledge and you know what you're doing. Uh, the greens have been aerated and sanded, so they're not great. But um, I know what I'm doing here. I understand what I'm doing here, whereas Crook, Bishop Auckland, Portney Spring, Darlington, all these new clubs see them. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what to expect from the greens. I didn't know what to expect from the fairways. I didn't know what to expect off the tee box. I didn't know the local hazards. I just was guessing. Some, sometimes I thought the greens have got no hazards, no bunkers, and they did. But here I know everything. I know everything about this course. And my God, does local knowledge make it so much easier to play around the golf? I mean, like that drive, I knew straight away, I said, if I get it to the left side of that bunker on the right, we get it over there and it goes straight. I know fine well that's on the fairway. Whereas if I never played the course before, I wouldn't have a clue and I'd probably aim up where that left bunker is and end up there. But that's the difference, local knowledge. It's absolutely massive in golf. I'm telling you, knowing the course is absolutely massive for hitting low scores. But there we go, I fired it. I have parred a 375 yard hole with a 50 pence golf ball, six pound a dozen. There we go, what does that prove? It proves a lot to me, I tell you, that proves a lot to me. I mean, I don't know, well, how, did I, how did I do there? I went one over, one over. Is that one over a par? One, two. Par, I went par. One over, par. That's the sort of golf I'm playing. That's my sort of handicap, sort of um, a 12 handicap, an 11 handicap golfer. That's the sort of golf I can play. 
and to think that I used a 50 pence golf ball to do it's amazing um put it up so you can see me better what do I think of the ball well I think it's not too bad actually I don't actually think this is a bad ball I mean I got it out of the packet um and I said it looks all right actually um the only well few pointers few pointers i'd like to point out first of all remember this, this the, the the pros are it's 50 pence a ball second of all the distance the, the distance of the ball is great and everything um third it's accessible it's open to everyone anyone can just pop into argos just order from a catalog and say right i want some incisive balls and then they just give it to you i've, I've, I've got to be honest the sell out quick i had to go to the um I went to the one at um, Billingham, I went to Hartlepool, I went to Newton Aycliffe at the finish. They got them in at Billingham and I managed to get them. So make sure before you go that they've got them in stock. Look at the catalogue first, make sure you're in stock. Uh, there's a lot of pros through it. Um, if you're new to the game and you want a ball that's not going to rock the boat, this is the one. If you want a ball that um, is for kids and everything who would just start the game and they're not, they're not fashion conscious of Callaway and... Uh, tight list uh, and you know I don't know Mizuno and Volvic and all these makes that I use um, especially Volvic because Booba Watson uses them um, then yeah this is this is the ball for them it's a starter ball um, but the cons are first of all the court and I don't think is very durable I think you're gonna have to use two or three balls around a course because they do scruff very easy um, and they do mark very easy uh, but what do you expect for 50 pence a ball um, the second con that i found was it's got a slightly lower ball fight than most of them um, compared to the tightest velocity compared to the volvic vivid compared to the callaway super soft compared to um, the striction soft feel it's got a lower ball flight on everything it's got a lower ball flight on the drives on the irons if you're in the bunker again lower ball flight um, and the, the other con is it sounds a little bit harder off the, the club. I mean, I, I used I, I, for a couple of holes those Dunlop 65s from the 60s. The feel is very much like that, very hard. It's like a, a hardish ball. And it does feel hard off the club. Not terribly hard that you feel like it's going to break the club or it's going to vi or it's vibrating off the club or everything. But it's it's certainly not a soft feeling ball. Um, that's, that's the other con. Uh, Putting wise. I think it was fine chipping wise it was all right it's just you've got to accept that this is a 50 pence ball this is right at the end of, of the bottom end budget you can't get any cheaper and that's what you're going to get from the ball but in terms of 50 pence i mean personally i wouldn't use the golf ball i wouldn't personally use this golf ball uh it's not the right ball for me for for the ultimate performance but if i just wanted to, to go on a little par three academy course or i'm just messing about practicing pra for practice balls i would buy three dozen of these and just use them as practice balls there's absolutely nothing wrong with them as practice balls um so yeah yeah even off the putter face i didn't think it was too hard i mean the ball came off a little bit quicker than what um, it would with a soft feel ball but in terms of um performance it's not too bad for value for money overall value for money and everything like that this ball's an eight out of ten so yeah that's inside this uh, golf ball review done. Um, keep subscribing and liking the channel. This is John from John Hutton Golf Channel. Hopefully I'll see you soon. Keep subscribing, keep liking, and hopefully I'll get back out of the course and uh, do another 85 challenge and all the other challenges I've got set for myself. So yeah, see you later. Bye for now. Cheers. Bye.